The cover of a magazine doesn't always show what's inside the magazine. With Silicon Valley, it is a glossy cover. The reality inside Silicon Valley can be a difficult one. This is Raw Startup. I've actually taken the journey to Silicon Valley. We started Vivino in Copenhagen, Denmark. When we wanted to win the US market, I moved to Silicon Valley to make sure that happened. Today, we have over 35 million users. 20,000 people install Vivino every single day, and we've raised more than $57 million. I will show you things that you didn't know about Silicon Valley, things that will surprise you. For every reason not to move, I will give you tips on how to handle it. I will show you exactly how we handle those challenges. Sure, there are business reasons not to move. On top of that are all the private reasons. For me, it was hard to move the full family from wonderful Copenhagen and everything they knew. Nine hours time difference and 11 hours flight from everything the kids knew and far, far away from their friends. The day of the move, a morning back in August 2013, uh, was especially difficult. I still remember uh, walking up the stair at, stairs at the airport and well, it's, it still gets me that it was a really, really difficult thing to take the family away from everything they knew and really a good life in Copenhagen. Um, so at one point at the airport, I thought to myself, what the heck are you doing? Taking the family away from everything they love is difficult. It was uh, definitely a rough day. Okay, moving on. Uh, throughout the video, I'll give you some pro tips for every single reason not to move. On top of that, I'll give you a full list of bigger things on how to deal with Silicon Valley. Okay, good. Let's start by defining what Silicon Valley is in this video. Silicon Valley is located in the west of the US, about six hours drive north of Los Angeles. The old Silicon Valley is located in the south around the city of Palo Alto. This is where it all started 50 years ago. And today companies like Google, Facebook and Apple are based there. Up north, we have San Francisco. In the past 10 years, a lot of companies have decided to be based in San Francisco instead of the traditional Silicon Valley. Today, tech giants like Uber, Twitter, and Salesforce are headquartered in San Francisco. Vivino is also based in downtown San Francisco. If you look at the map, it shows the full San Francisco Bay Area. In this video, I will use a broad definition of Silicon Valley, which includes the full San Francisco Bay Area and the cities of Oakland and San Jose. Population of this area is around 8 million people. Okay, good stuff. Let's get started with the list. Number one, recruiting is hard and keeping employees even harder. Sure, the best people are in Silicon Valley, but what does that matter if you can't hire them? The competition for the best people in Silicon Valley is insane. I've never seen or even heard about another place where there's so much competition for talent. When you move to Silicon Valley, you realize that you're not as attractive as you were wherever you moved from. You're now playing in the big league, competing with companies like Google, Facebook and Apple and thousands of other startups. They all want a piece of the best talent. In your home market, be that Buffalo, New York or Copenhagen, Denmark, you are a big fish that could attract the best talent. In Silicon Valley, you're a tiny, tiny fish among sharks. The second thing is once you hired somebody good, you also want to keep them. With so much competition for talent, our employees are contacted by headhunters every single day. Their LinkedIn is being pounded by amazing offers. So the job market is rough. Let's look at the pro tips and see what we can do about that. The first one, use your X factor. Use your X factor if you have one. We're in wine and make it attractive for everyone who's into wine. Fortunately, a lot of people are into wine. So try and attract people that are specifically interested in whatever you're building. Second one is don't hire engineers in Silicon Valley. The competition is especially difficult when it comes to engineers. So try and hire your engineers elsewhere, elsewhere in the world or elsewhere in the US. At Vino, we don't have any engineers in Silicon Valley. They're all based elsewhere, most of them in Copenhagen, Denmark. That has an amazing pool of great engineers. Finally, be the best place to work. Build a culture where people really want to work. Word spreads and people will hear that this is a good place to work. Great. Let's move on to number two. Number two, everything is insanely expensive. The cost is really a big problem, especially if you're an early stage startup. 
in the early stage, what you really need is time, time to get the product right. You can easily have a situation where a certain amount of money gives you one year of runway in Silicon Valley, but somewhere else, it'll give you two years of runway. The cost of setting up a startup in Silicon Valley are just crazy. Salary amongst the highest in the world, and the same goes for rent and most other expenses. Now, this is not because people live lavish lifestyles in Silicon Valley with caviar every night. The cost of living is so high that if you don't have a good salary, you'll end up on the street. Let me illustrate that with a few examples from an article from SFGate. The median price for a new or existing condo in San Francisco is $1.3 million. That means that the income needed to buy a median home is over $300,000 per year. Obviously, even in Silicon Valley, most people don't make $300,000 a year, which means it'll take two high incomes to actually be able to buy a house. That takes us to the next one. Let's say you have two people making money in the household. Then there's a good chance you'll need some childcare. The average cost of childcare is around $2,000 per month. The same cost in Copenhagen would be around 500. I've been blessed with three wonderful children, and I'd say good luck affording three kids in Silicon Valley. This means that to have a decent lifestyle in Silicon Valley, you have to make a lot of money. That means high salaries, and that's not great for a bootstrapped startup with very little cash. I have one pro tip on this one, and it's a little bit of a strange one. Don't try and save money. This might be a little bit of a strange pro tip. Sometimes you can find things that cost less, but don't even go there. You want a great lawyer and you have to pay for it. There's no way around it. You will get what you pay for. You get a cheap rent, there will be a hole in the roof. You find a cheap lawyer and you'll end up paying a high price in the end. I'm afraid this is the price of doing business in Silicon Valley. There are no shortcuts. Moving on. Number three, time difference and distance can be a major challenge. In many cases, moving to Silicon Valley means splitting up the team. Any split up matters. Of course, nine hours is a big challenge, but as soon as you split up, things change. You're not in the same room anymore. You'll need a lot more coordination and communication to avoid misunderstanding and to make sure that work progresses smoothly. Even if you don't split up the team, a move means you move away from whatever you're used to. That could be business partners, family, or whoever you usually rely on. Silicon Valley is far from Europe and even pretty far from the East Coast of the US. The time difference can be as brutal as the flights. Let's say you start work at 9 a.m. in Silicon Valley. At that time, it's 6 p.m. in Europe. This means that during normal office hours, you're never in the office at the same time. On top of that, you have the holidays. In the U.S., they're kind of surprised by having a five-day vacation for Easter. And somehow in Denmark, they're surprised by Thanksgiving every single year. Good stuff. Let's get to the pro tips, and there's quite a lot of them this time. The first one, everyone should travel alone. We humans are social beings and like to travel together. This is not a good idea. Whenever possible, people should travel alone for two reasons. If you travel with a companion, you will spend most of your time with that travel companion. That's not the purpose of traveling. You're from the same office, spend the time together there. If you travel alone, you'll spend more time with the locals and that's exactly what you want to do. Also, you don't want the offices to be siloed. You want people from one office to be as much as possible in the other office. So you want to maximize the time that people from a different location are at your location. It's pretty simple math. If three people travel separately, they'll be at the location three times longer as if they were traveling together. Number two, give long distance employees priority. If you're in the US, respond to all messages from Europe first. If you're in Europe, make sure you respond to US messages as soon as they arrive. If you don't do that, everything's gonna take forever. Everything's gonna move in 24 hour cycles and it will slow down your organization considerably. Communicate and over communicate. Everything changes once you're not in the same room. You have to communicate a lot and more than you think. Make sure each location is as independent as possible. When we moved, we decided that product and engineering was gonna be in Copenhagen. Most other functions were gonna to move to San Francisco. That split has worked well. What you really want to do is to have functions that can work independently at each location. We had severe problems with marketing here in Silicon Valley because it relied too much on engineering in Copenhagen. As soon as we made marketing independent here in Silicon Valley, things worked out just fine. Now let's move on to number four. Number four, traffic and transport is horrible. 
No matter where you decide to live in Silicon Valley, it's unlikely it will be right next to your office. You'll have to do some kind of commute and that can be painful. Public transport is not that great. There is BART, Bay Area Rapid Transport. In most cases, it's not that rapid. It's pretty overcrowded and very often breaks down. It was built in the 90s for the population that the Bay Area had in the 90s. Everything has changed in the Bay Area since 1996, except for BART, and BART just can't handle the pressure. Obviously, you can take the car, but that isn't any better. Over the past 10 years, traffic has gone from bad to horrible. This article says 80% growth in traffic from 2010 to 2017. All that said, I'm incredibly privileged. I take my bike down to the ferry, ride the ferry over the bay, but when I go home, I ride all the way home over beautiful Golden Gate. Takes me just over an hour, amazing. So for me, this has not been a big struggle. I've had the best commute in the world. Now let's get to the pro tips. The first one's obvious, take the bike. If at all possible, take the bike. Not everyone can, but if possible, do it. But be careful out there. Most drivers are not used to bikes and it can be pretty dangerous. Set realistic expectations. This is almost like just giving into it. Just expect an hour's commute if you live in Silicon Valley. That's just the way it is. Number five, society and politics are confusing. For a tech nerd like me coming to Silicon Valley, it was always like coming home. Everywhere you go, you see tech and it's amazing. At the same time, everything's confusing. Basic societal needs are not as well funded and organized as I'm used to in Northern Europe. A lot of things just don't work and we're not doing anything about it. It's very, very hard to find consensus to make any change. As the tech capital of the world, we need to do a better job at getting society around us to work as we're a part of that society. So many strange paradoxes that defy logic. Let me give you some examples. Silicon Valley may just be the most prosperous area in the entire human history. We've never seen this much wealth gathered in a relatively small place. Then why? When you walk the streets of San Francisco, there's homeless people everywhere. That's just not right and something society's broken there. We're in the tech capital of the world. You see self-driving cars and the latest tech everywhere in Silicon Valley. Then why are parts of society decades behind the rest of the world? Visiting any government institution is like doing time travel. There are long lines and plenty of big paper forms. It can take months to get a new driver's license. You go to the DMV and have a look. It's not pretty. Somehow banks also haven't followed the rest of the world. I mean, they've been using mobile payments in Kenya for the past 12 years. But somehow in Silicon Valley, we use paper checks. Paper checks, really? To me, that doesn't make any sense. When I moved here, I had to learn to write a paper check because I hadn't done it for 20 years. It just feels like the entire country is divided and it's impossible to find a consensus even to do what's good and right for the country. Instead, all political decisions are just run by money and sold to the highest bidder. For business, that means a lot of industries are just broken and inefficient. Old laws that can't be changed and monopolies that should be broken up but are not. In the wine business, there's something called a three-tier system. It's a system that was introduced almost a hundred years ago when prohibition ended. It's a system that makes no sense to the average wine drinker and no sense to most of the industry. Still, a few people make a lot of money off this three-tier system. They've been blocking any change and have been successful in doing so for almost a hundred years. This is the case for a lot of industries. Broken laws, monopolies, inefficiencies, and there's no way for society to change the laws for the good of the people. Okay, pro tips on this one. Check your industry well, it may be broken. When I moved to the US, I knew the wine industry in the US was very different than anywhere else in the world and very difficult to work with. Make sure you do that research, check your industry well. You might get very, very surprised. Okay, we're done with the list. I now have some overall pro tips for you. The final tips might just be the most important ones, so stay tuned for that. The first one, travel frequently to Silicon Valley. You can get some advantages out of Silicon Valley by traveling to Silicon Valley. I did that a lot before I moved here. Rented a cheap motel around the airport, rented a car and got a lot of good meetings, both in the south, in San Francisco, as well as all the way up in Napa. It was a great way to get a taste of Silicon Valley, built my network here and later made the move a lot easier. I would recommend anyone to travel in at least once a quarter. When you decide to move, have a lot of money. If you decide you have to move, make sure you have a lot of money. 
don't do it before an A round and move as few people as you can. Don't come here with a short runway and expect to raise money. That usually goes wrong. Have a really good reason to go. The most important pro tip here is that you need to make sure you have a really good reason to go to Silicon Valley. If you don't need to be here, you should not be here. Ask yourself, do you need to be here? If the answer isn't hell yes, you shouldn't be here. For Vivino, we wanted to make sure we won the most important wine market in the world, the US wine market. We felt that if we won the US market, there was a good chance we win the entire world. And we sort of need to be in the largest market in order to win it. Great, that's it for the pro tips. In the end, it's about where you are with your startup. If you can deal with all the challenges in this video, you'll probably be fine. Obviously, every story has two sides, and this is one of the sides. This video is a part of a two-part series. The other video is about why you should move to Silicon Valley. That video is gonna pop up right now. If it doesn't, it's because the video hasn't released yet, but will in a few days. That's it. If you want more videos just like this one to help you build your amazing startup, please subscribe to my channel right now. Thank you very much for watching.